Hey everyone, I hope you're all well wherever you are and whatever you're up to. This is part, the second part of my two part little series on sewing party wear and sewing with sparkly sequin fabric and you can see my next make very very glittery and very very sparkly. So I wanted to chat to you through that today. So first of all, the pattern that I used is the True Bice Ogden Cami, which I have I know I've made it lots of times before, but I just feel like it's a really good, easy, basic pattern to work with, and you can do loads and loads of different things with it. So in the summer, I was making it as like a little top to be cooling in the in the autumn. It's good for layering things up with, and then at Christmas time, da da, you can make it into something amazing and sparkly but I've done a few little changes and one of them you can probably see is that I made this double strap here. So I'm gonna chat about that a bit later. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about the fabric now. So you can see that I've made mine in a sequin fabric and this is one of the ones that we've got in the shop this year. And it's like a two-tone sequin. So you can see when I brush up, see how it's changing color to silver, which is pretty cool. And then we've also got a black and silver combination too. So of course I went for the pink because I'm sure you guys know that I love pink. Um, so when you come to this, this really took me by surprise. When this fabric was on the roll in the shop, I was like, you know, I like it. But when I made it into something, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. I totally love it. Um, and I, yeah, I was just really surprised at how easy it was to work with. And it actually looks really good when it's made up. So when you come to cut this fabric out, because the sequins are a bit thicker and they're a little bit bigger, probably going to be easier to cut it out on a single layer rather than like folding it in half like you normally would and um, just because there's like a lot of sequins to get through basically the backing fabric on this fabric is just like quite a fine mesh so really all the weight of the fabric comes from the sequence at the front so the sequins are attached to this mesh at the kind of like at the side of the sequin which means that the sequins sort of like flapping up and down a little bit so when you do come to cut it out what I would suggest that you do is smooth all of the sequins in one direction so that they're lying nice and flat and you can either choose whether you want the top to be predominantly pink or predominantly silver or then for the black as well so just make sure that when you cut out the front and the back that the sequins are like brushed in the same direction. If I'd cut my pattern pieces out the other way around then my top would mostly look like this because the, the natural position of the sequins is probably more that they're going to kind of fall down just as you like wear it and your arms and your hands sort of brush against it. Um, so yeah you could choose what colour you want to be the sort of main feature of the garment. So we'll just cut it out um, as you normally would, just use the, the same pattern pieces. Once I'd cut the fabric out, so the lining and the sequins, I then used the prim forming tape interfacing and that effectively stabilises and it stay stitches the whole of the neckline edge and under the arms too. So that was on the sequins and the lining and it just stops it from stretching out. Then this fabric does need lined as well. So what I did was I just used exactly the same pattern pieces that you use for the front and the back and I used that to cut out a lining and I used some of our black plain viscose fabric just because it's quite lightweight and it flops around and it feels nice and soft against your skin. So that was what I cut out for the lining and then for the straps I instead of making like one thicker strap I just made two really thin straps and put them in just for a little bit of a change and I used my loop turner to turn them through. So yeah, the loop turner is good when you're doing straps that are really, really narrow because the safety pin might not fit through if it's a narrower one. So, and but then in terms of how I put the straps in, it's just like the same way that you normally would, just like the way it says in the instructions. And um, when you come to actually sew the side seams of the sequins when you're sewing it down um, the side there, before you sew, just again, make sure all the sequins are like brushed in the same direction. Now, this is when I wasn't sure what was actually gonna happen when I put it in the sewing machine, but I thought, what have I got to lose? I'm just gonna try and sew it and see what happens because there'll be quite a lot of tips out there that say that you need to like cut the sequins out or take them out of where you're gonna, take them out of the seam allowance or take them out of the seam line. But I thought, do you know what? It's gonna take ages. I'm just gonna see what happens if I sew it. So I just sewed it with the machine and, and instead of pinning, I used these prim fabric clips to hold it together. And I have to say that it was totally fine. I mean, it sounds quite loud and you can like hear the needle like dong, dong, dong through it, but it still stitched it and it still seemed pretty secure. And then you can't really like press the sequins open as much because also like they might melt as well. 
but what I did was I just used my fingers to kind of open out the seam allowance and sort of squish it flat and you just kind of make the sequins sit in that position and then it was totally fine. So then you just put your straps in like you normally would and then when the instruction com instructions come to tell you to put the facing in then you just use your lining pieces which are like the full length of the top. So you still just put them in exactly the same way that you would if it was a facing. And then I thought, I'm just going to try and understitch it also, like just the way that you normally would if you had normal fabric. And it totally worked as well. It was totally fine. So the only issue where I had like a little bit of difficulty was when I was sewing the lining to the outer sequins and I got to the seam allowance at the underarm seams because you're kind of going through double layer of sequin there. So and I mentioned this in last week's video as well, so if you watched that, you'll have heard this before. Just manually turn the hand wheel on the sewing machine when you get to that section, and it just means that you have more control and you can kind of wriggle the fabric around and sort of gently draw the needle through the fabric rather than the machine as it does automatically, like dum dum dum, like really forces it through. And yeah, it was totally, totally, totally fine. So the seam allowances on the inside of the sequins are just are just like left. These sequins just don't really fall off. When you when you cut it initially, there'll be a lot of sequin debris, but after that sort of fallen off, the sequins actually stay on so you don't have to finish off your seam allowances. And then when it came to do the hem, I was thinking, oh, shall I turn it back? Shall I put the bias binding on it again? But as I'd cut it, it actually just kind of looked okay. And the sequins weren't falling off. So I've actually not even hemmed the sequins. I just left it. And I think it's probably gonna be totally fine and it just gives like a nice kind of crisp edge to it as well. And it means that there's not a sequence then catching on my clothes on the, on the inside of the fabric. So that was all I did for the hem. So really my summary of working with this fabric is it's actually totally easy and it looks really cool as well. And you could use this for any like simple pattern. So you could use this fabric with the green line scout tee as well if you wanted a little bit more coverage. I think it would look cool. I think it would also look really cool as a skirt as well. You'd obviously have to line that too. Um, I got a sequin skirt for Sophia last year which was really similar sequins to this so that might be quite fun as well but yeah don't be scared to give this sequin fabric a go it's actually totally fine I mean you might want to have some backup machine needles just in case you break one because the chances are a bit higher but other than that it's actually really not that bad and you don't really need to do anything like too special or technical and yet you end up with a super glittery top so I think I'm probably going to just wear this one with some jeans and sparkly shoes so it's a bit more of like a smart casual party vibe but you could easily like pair this with with a nice skirt or yeah make it dress it up a little bit more I'm probably going to end up just dressing it down a little bit more but yeah you know you've got options there so of course you can get this fabric on my website and the other colourway that I mentioned as well so the black and silver so I'll link to the blog post that goes with this video in the description so then you can see some more pictures and see see some more of my tips if you want to just be reminded of them and then also the links to get the fabric too um, but I hope I've inspired you to just give sewing some party wear a go they're actually because they're really simple patterns this one and the makes that I did in part one as well they're quite they the construction's actually really similar but you just get something really cool so yeah I hope it just gives you some ideas of things that you can do but thanks so much for watching guys and um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video and um, but yeah I'll see you next time thanks bye <music>